Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Boo Boy Kennels. And today, yes, today we, you know, we got that next episode. You know, because I've been gone for a while. Just life has been so, so busy. That, that's really the best way I can put it. I guess I had to say, you know, with uh, having my first grandson, a lot of my time is just really taken up. Really don't have too much time for myself, uh, especially when it comes to gaming. Really, you know, I, I've been kind of lacking in that department, but it is what it is. You know, we just have to deal with life and, you know, take care of those situations. Aside from, you know, I, I am like the uh, dedicated babysitter. I swear it's like every single weekend I babysit, work all during the week, babysit all during the weekend. So, you know, that is just what life brings you. But anyways, aside from that. You know, there's a couple of things, you know, I, I, I've had on my mind. Uh, some of, you know, most of these are actually pretty recent. So I guess I'll just uh, begin with the most recent things. First one being the situation with Delaware and their uh, their fantastic idea of what, of what they like to call common sense gun control. And, and as you know, if, if you're one of those people that are into the 2A community, you know, there is no such thing as common sense gun control there, there just really isn't it's, it's just gun control and controlling people that's all that is so in lieu of all that you know delaware has these great ideas of hey let's make it to where you know you're limited to 17 rounds oh but, but by the way if you get your concealed carry license you're exempt from that so let me see you can purchase the firearm but you're limited to 17 rounds Unless you get your concealed carry license and then you can have more than that, make it make sense. I know it makes money for them because there's a lot of concealed carry license holders. So if it's a financial thing, well, they're doing their job in that department when it comes to taking care of Delaware's residents, or should I say Delaware residents taking care of the state by funding their crazy policies. The, the other thing, you know, that really bugs me as well with all that is pretty much where they're all trying to make even more restrictions. I mean, it's bad enough, you know, people pretty much call Delaware like uh, California because of how wacky they're trying to get with their uh, with their restrictions and policies when it comes to like rifles, AR-15s, you know, those type of weapons like right now. You know, Delaware's current state, you can't even buy them. Like, if you didn't get them before they passed that 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 crazy ban of theirs, uh, you really can't get them. So that makes that, you know, extremely difficult. So while, you know, there's many people in the game right now, Delaware's, uh, you know, Rifle Association, uh, different advocacy groups, you know, especially big groups um, like uh, FPC. Uh, I know... With the NRA is very little with them. Uh, you got Delaware gun rights. Uh, they're very big into, you know, fighting those uh, those policies in court, you know, and trying to get a lot of that crazy mess, uh, you know, overturned. But I guess I guess it's only but you know it's only going to be time before that uh, that craziness you know uh, gets itself rectified in the end. Because for right now, you know, this isn't even a state I you know I I really even want to be in. I, I really don't. Like, I'm so sick of how Delaware is. It's not even funny. And, you know, and it's not just, you know, because of 2A rights, you know. I mean, that that is a, a big thing for me. You know, I'm definitely uh, very supportive, you know, of the rights, of, you know, that we are enshrined with. So, you know, I, I, you know, I definitely take that seriously. But, I mean, that's just how things are right now in Delaware. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into our next topic of the day. And that one is PlayStation. What has PlayStation been doing lately? Now, I know people are, are uh, up in hands right now with, you know, these game removals. Now, you know, especially when you're, you know, you're paying a fee for a service. You know, and I get it because it's like streaming. You know, they can they can remove things at any time. You know, but when you have stuff that's, you know, it's been in your, you know, in your inventory, however you want to call it, your game catalog, you know, whatever, however you want to refer to it. You know, you like to go and, you know, and play those games whenever you have time and you feel like playing them. That's pretty much 
what you want to end up doing. But when they start removing things, you know, that, that part gets a, a, a bit annoying because then you can't play the games you want. So, you know, I think it's a real big me- uh, misstep with how, uh, you know, Sony PlayStation is handling that. I mean, but you got, you know, you got to kind of figure, you know, if you're paying for a service, especially if it's that type of service, you know, games are going to come and go because of licensing issues or whatever there may be that they, you know, whatever deals they have going on with that. But that's always going to be the case with, you know, with, with any type of service like that. Um, same thing with Netflix, you know, where they remove movies because either they lose rights to it. Um, they don't want to renew licenses. The companies that actually own the films themselves want to put them on their own platform rather than, you know, keep it on, you know, for as example, uh, Netflix. So I can see why, you know, Sony goes the route that they go. But you are really, really pissing off a big, big base of your customers. So, you know, you might want to kind of think of what you're doing, especially with all these crazy price increases y'all have done lately. I know they, you know, they've gotten so high where I don't even want to renew mines. Like when my renewal came up, I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I am going to let that one go and just uh, expire. I just don't be on PlayStation enough to justify that cost. I just don't. You know, I mainly just game on PC and that's kind of where I like to be. Is it better? In some ways it is. Other ways it's not. Consoles definitely, you know, do have their place. You know, and I do like the convenience of the console. Like, you know, that is probably the biggest, biggest seller of anything is the convenience of the consoles. You don't have to worry about changing parts, upgrading stuff. But when, you know, but when Sony starts doing all these crazy, you know, price jacking, removing uh, services, removing games, or removing movies that people purchased, and then, you know, they have to go back on that and get people access back to their movies. It's just crazy, you know, like, like why do you want to deal with that? So that leads me into my third topic, and that is physical media. So I've, I've always bought, you know, DVDs since my kids were, you know, very little. You know, a lot of the cartoon stuff, Disney cartoons, uh, you know, family movies. I've always bought those. And, you know, then eventually I, I ended up going over to Blu-ray. You know, once that became a little bit more uh, feasible, I, I would say. From there, you know, I pretty much, you know, I, I prefer the 4K. A little bit more pricier, but you know, for certain movies, it there is definitely a big, big benefit to moving to the uh to the 4K um you know medium itself. You know, especially when it comes to picture quality. And as I referenced earlier with like PlayStation, you know, with certain uh streaming services, they you know they remove a lot of movies for whatever reason they may be or in some cases there's movies that have never even been on streaming so you have no way to even watch those you know you might find them on like you know like youtube every now and then some of them um but they're just you know just think about it this way if there was a movie you like to watch all the time then and all all, all of a sudden it got removed off of whatever digital platform it was. Nobody else has it. The only way you're even going to watch that movie is if you bought it. A physical copy, not a digital copy, but an actual physical copy. So I don't, I don't consider myself a collector, but I do have a good bit of movies where my normal, you know, friends and family may, you know, may think I'm a collector, but I'm really not. I just enjoy certain movies and I'd rather watch it at its best quality. At the best audio with the least amount of compression. Whenever I want. You know, so if you, if you think about it, if the Internet went out, just for an example, you know, I had no Internet. So I can't stream nothing. I can always just pop in a 4K disc, a Blu-ray disc, a DVD disc. Hell, <laughs> even some of my VHSs. 
I can pop some of those in. And, you know, and there are certain movies that, you know, for whatever reason, never came out on, on anything other than DVD. So I'll give you an example. Um, especially with the Latino community, a, I would say a good majority are probably very big fans of Blood In, Blood Out. I think the other the other name it goes by is uh, Bound by Honor, if I'm not mistaken, but we all know it as Blood in Blood Blood in Blood Out. Great movie, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually owned by Disney. And the people that like you know the actors and some of the people that made the movie have been trying to get that you know, that movie made or at least published on other mediums. And they just haven't been able to it's like, you know, it's almost kind of like Disney doesn't want um, anything to do with that movie, but yet it would be a big seller for them, especially with the Latin community. I mean, I, I still have the DVD. I mean, I, I'm glad I got the DVD, but if they came out with a Blu-ray or 4K, like I'm definitely going to upgrade that. No questions asked. So, I mean, that's part of the reason why, you know, I prefer those, uh, those, those physical medias, actual hard copies. More so for whenever these, you know, crazy streaming services ever decide, hey, let's go ahead and pull these from our, from our catalogs. Well, at least the people that physically own them can continue to watch them, which is a great thing. And then you also got to think about, too, I, I always, um, I always compare streaming to like mp3s so if you remember when uh you know especially when mp3s became uh you know very popular compared to the uh actual cds themselves you know they used to say oh it's just like listening to the actual cd uh no it's not no because uh, mp3s were highly compressed now they they do have a lot of good compression methods and how they do it so it, it will sound pretty close to the actual CD itself, but it's not the same. It, it just isn't. And that's kind of the same thing with, um, you know, if you, if you listen to a song on a CD, but then you listen to the vinyl record of that same song, they, they just have a different feel, a different sound, a different presence. So that's how I, I compare streaming services with physical media. If you want the best quality possible, buy the actual disc. Support the movies that you do enjoy because, you know, we, if people don't support them, the movies aren't going to be made. I mean, you got to figure movies are, you know, they're a business. So they got to make money. So if they're not making money, they're not going to make the movies. And you don't want everything just going straight to streaming. Remember how when bad movies came out, they went straight to DVD. You never heard about them. You never seen them. They weren't in the theaters. It was okay. We made this movie. It, you know, it was so bad it went straight to DVD. So you know, you don't you don't want that, but you do want them to come out on physical media. And the only way the companies will continue to do so is by us supporting those physical copies and the movies that we enjoy, that we love, and that we want to be custodians of. The reason I say custodians is because even though I have a good bit of good bit amount of uh, movies, you know, when my time is up, you know, um, all my movies, CDs, passing them on to my kids, and hopefully they pass them on to their kids. Because there will come a time when certain movies you just won't be able to buy, like Cocoon. If you want to get Cocoon on Blu-ray in the states, well, good luck trying to find that. I ended up getting a German copy because that was the only way I can, I can get a Blu-ray version of Cocoon. Cocoon Part 2 you can buy easily, no problem. But that movie was mm, not so good. But the first original was very, very, very good. So, keep supporting your physical media and that way you know we'll at least keep getting actual physical copies that we can own, hold, Cherish, play, and enjoy. Anyways, 
I know it's been a long time since, you know, my, my last podcast episode. So this one isn't going to be very long, but I at least want to, uh, you know, to have something bring to the table, have something to be a little bit thought provoking. And, uh, and hopefully I can continue this without uh, any further life interruptions. Well, you know, other than that, it's been your boy, boot boy, kennels. And as always, keep them scratching. Peace. We up out of here.